Getting closer and closer to Selection Sunday, 10 days away as we welcome in CBS Sports Bracketologist Jerry Palm here in studio and we welcome in 24-7 Sports Director of Scouting Adam Finkelstein here to talk winners and losers from Thursday. The Bracketology, not a lot of Bracketology on this day, Jerry. So who's your biggest winner? My biggest winner is Wisconsin. I mean, Wisconsin had just been in a miserable stretch of games. They'd lost seven out of nine since the beginning of February. They had a battle with Rutgers today at home, but at least they finally got a win. And now there's a lot less pressure on going to Purdue on Sunday and playing it uh, against the number one seed on their senior day and having to try and get a win to just get some momentum into the conference tournament. So for Wisconsin, this is, this is a big boost for them uh, now you know they don't necessarily have to beat Purdue they weren't going to miss the tournament you know don't, don't get me wrong uh, but this does a little bit to preserve some seeding well this was the team that was the fourth number four seed yeah. on the yeah. bracket reveal show yeah, just a couple and then they ago. went south well they were already going south right yeah they had lost really going league. south yeah, seven of lost. nine yeah seven of nine yeah and that started February 1st so when the committee gave us that team as the fourth number one or the uh, four seed, the fourth of the four seeds, they talked about how this is an example of how recency bias is not something that they consider. And uh, fortunately for Wisconsin, that's the case because they have really done a lot of damage to their resume in this lengthy stretch uh, since February 1st. Wisconsin has been a topic of discussion on the Ion College Basketball Podcast hosted by Matt Norland and Gary Parrish. And they're using the metric, the T-ball metric, which they've been A lately. A another word for you know what? They've been A lately. So they've been crappy lately, uh, Adam, Wisconsin. So trying to get back uh, on the right side of things here as we head into Selection Sunday. They'll wrap up the regular season again against Purdue, perhaps the number one overall seed in this NCAA tournament. Give us your winner from Thursday, Adam. Well, you know, I love those mid-majors. You guys are talking about going south, so let's go uh, down to Florida. And I just think what Stetson was able to pull off in the Atlantic Sun Conference semifinals. This is a conference that's number one seed. Eastern Kentucky is already out. Stetson was the perennial favorite left. It looked like they were on their way out to the same Jacksonville team that knocked off EKU, but they overcome a double-figure deficit in the last five minutes of the game and get a step back three with about four seconds left on the clock to propel them into the finals, which they will host at their gym on Sunday. Shouts to the Hatters. Uh, it, 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 oddly enough, I was just down in Deland, Florida. Oh, yeah. I went to one of their college baseball games. They just upset Florida. Uh, the Gators, like the big boys, chomp, chomp. So shouts to the Hatters. Shouts to Adam Finkelstein uh, going with, with Stetson as his biggest winner. All right, now for the team that disappointed uh, on this day, Jerry. There's one team that lost by like 1,000 points, and that is who? And that is Pacific. Yeah. I, I mean, what? 59. Like, they lost by 59. Like, it was what? 36 it was 56 two. to 9 at halftime yeah, nine points in one half I mean that's just boy that's and that's an 8-9 game I mean that wasn't even you were playing number one and you could see maybe that would happen no that's an 8-9 game and they lost by uh, I don't know it's I think uh, results are still coming in on that I think the vote totals are still <laughs> are still climbing all precincts are not reporting yeah, yet. That's, boy that's that's the WCC just, tournament that's one that they're going to want to burn the film and pretend that this game never happened that's too bad for Pacific they uh, went winless in the WCC this season as they get knocked out in the first round of the WCC tournament. Uh, Adam, your biggest loser is who on this day? Well, I got, I got a little bit of a curveball for you because I've got a recruiting nugget. And so my biggest loser is Indiana. Liam McNeely, a top 20 prospect in the country, five-star prospect and one of the best shooters in the country. And by the way, that's something Indiana really needs. Uh, decommitted just a day after it was revealed that Mike Woodson will be back next year. So the timing is suspect, as my eight-year-old would say. Uh, and it's also just not a good sign for Mike Woodson. Obviously, it doesn't send the kind of message he's looking for it puts uh, even more pressure on them to find shooters in the portal and again this was the missing ingredient they're playing Mackenzie McBacco mostly at the three all season long trying to pound the ball into the post without the necessary shooting that creates your floor spacing this was probably one of the few players in high school basketball who was capable of coming in and helping that right off the bat and to lose him now a day after yesterday's announcement it just stings in a couple of different ways. So I've got to say Indiana, unfortunately, 
the biggest loser of the day. Tonight. Yeah, that is a big loss uh, to lose a recruit like that, uh, and especially on the heels of the fact that Mike Woodson is set to return next season, which takes them out of the running of perhaps a Dusty May out of FAU. So uh, Indiana is Adam's biggest loser. You can hit him up on social media and go after him. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> all right. You want all things college basketball? We've got one of the best podcasts on the market, the Ion College Basketball Podcast with Matt Norlander and Gary Parrish, breaking all down the big storylines as we head into March, 10 days away from Selection Sunday. Download and follow today. All right, back here with Jerry Palm. End of night here, Jerry, as you take a look at your last four in and first four out. Start with your last four in. Give us the update at end of night here. Yeah, there is no change. It's still Utah, <coughs> excuse me, New Mexico, Colorado, and uh, Seton Hall, the, the, first, the last four in the bracket. Uh, same as the start of the day. Uh, and then the first four out, also the same, St. John's, Iowa, um, Villanova, and Pittsburgh. So uh, no changes yet today. Uh, we'll see if uh, we get something tomorrow, but uh, it looks like today it's going to hold steady. And Colorado got a big win on the road at Oregon, which was a double bubble game, a much needed win for the Buffs in that spot. Yeah, in fact, it's their best win of the season so far. Then that kind of tells you a little bit about why Colorado's near the bottom of the bracket is that a win at Oregon is their best win of the season to this point, at least in terms of the net. So they won at Oregon, they won at Washington. Those are their two quad one wins and neither of those teams are probably going to be in the NCAA tournament. They do have home wins over Washington State and Utah, but those are quad two games even though they may be, well, Washington State will be, Utah may be an NCAA tournament. Yeah, Washington State also losing on this night as they fall at home on senior night in the Apple Cup to Washington. Had a lead and they let it slip away late. Uh, they are on pace to make the NCAA tournament as they track to their first big dance since 2008. All right, let's welcome back Adam Finkelstein. And Adam, we look at the games on Friday uh, and, and really uh, another big week weekend in college hoops but let's focus on Friday what's your game to watch I'm pretty intrigued with the Atlantic 10 right now and uh, VCU and Dayton obviously Dayton it's ironic uh, from a national ranking standpoint they've been the class of the Atlantic 10 but they didn't win the league that went to Richmond now Richmond as Jerry will will know much better than I it doesn't look like they have an NCAA tournament resume but if they were to win that that conference tournament like they did the regular season or someone like VCU, which has as good of a history as anyone in that conference were to win that that conference tournament, now you've got a potential bid stealer because Dayton's metrics are very, very good. And so it seems to me, again, I defer to Jerry on this, of course, but the only way the Atlantic 10 gets two teams in is if Dayton does not win the conference tournament. Reason why this is interesting, the Atlantic 10 is eighth overall in Ken Palm in terms of the best conferences in college basketball. Just one ahead of them is the Mountain West. We're talking about the Mountain West potentially getting six teams and the Atlantic 10 only getting one. I know it's a big di differentiation, but that math, it seems what it seems to be what everybody's agreeing upon, but it just doesn't add up on the surface. So that's why the A-10 is particularly intriguing to me headed down the stretch here. Yeah, well, the problem with that is that conferences don't get bids, teams get bids, and the, the Mountain West has got half a dozen teams that might end up in the NCAA tournament because of what they've done over the course of the entire season. And unfortunately for the A-10, only one of the, their teams has that large potential, and that is Dayton. And it's funny because my bracket has got Richmond in it. My bracket is South Florida in it, who's the leader of the American Conference. Florida Atlantic and possibly Memphis are potential at-large teams, but South Florida, like Richmond, is not. Those two teams have to win their conference tournaments to get into the bracket. So I've already got two bid stealers built into my bracket, and I have for a few weeks now since those two teams took over control. Yeah, Jerry loves the A-10. So, uh, I do, shouts, actually. Shouts to Jerry yeah. on the A-10. It, look, it, it's an exciting brand of basketball, and uh, I know you've got Dayton as an 8 seed, a potential 8-9 game against Oklahoma, which would, that would be quite interesting if that were to go down. That would be a tough game to pick in my bracket. Uh, let's pick a game for you on Friday, Jerry, a game to watch. Well, I'm going to the Mountain West. I've got uh, Boise State at San Diego State. Yeah, it's, it's a battle for 
you know, the, the pile of teams at the top, there's uh, Utah State's got four losses, four teams, I think, with five losses in conference. And so these are two of those. And so it's, it's a separation in the conference for conference tournament seeding. Uh, it's also a quality win for the team that gets it either way, the home team or the road team. Uh, so it's another uh, star on the tournament resume for the, the winner of this game. And, uh, and I, you know, you're playing for seeding in the NCAA tournament. You're playing for seeding in the conference tournament. And so this is a big game at San Diego State. For Boise State, if they get the win, it's even bigger because it's a road game. Yeah, the Mountain West is stacked this season, as you know, and uh, expect to have plenty of teams into the NCAA tournament as we look ahead to Friday and Saturday here on CBS Sports HQ. Adam Finkelstein and Jerry Palm here with us on CBS Sports HQ. Men, thank you. And coming up on Friday, we've got a Maction doubleheader on CBS Sports Network with two of the top teams in the conference in action, Akron and Toledo tied atop the MAC. The Zips visit Western Michigan 6 Eastern time, followed by the Rockets hosting Kent State on CBS Sports Network. You can also watch on the CBS Sports app as well.